Following the success of SpaceX's fifth integrated flight test last Sunday, crews quickly got back to work at the launch site, readying systems for the next flight and continuing construction on the second launch pad. The build site also remained a hive of activity with the return of Booster 12, construction of Booster 16, and a little bit of well-deserved celebration in between. Now let's dig into this week's update. Picking up where we left off on Sunday, following the stunning success of Flight 5 and the successful capture of Booster 12 with Mechazilla, crews brought the booster transport stand toward the launch complex. The transport stopped at the roadblock, waiting for confirmation from Mission Control that the booster was safe to approach. About three hours later after landing, the chopsticks began lowering Booster 12 down towards the orbital launch mount to wait out the venting period. Following a pause, the booster's descent was resumed and the vehicle was steadily lowered through the center of the launch mount. The quick disconnect panel was then opened and attached to Booster 12, allowing the ground support infrastructure to be utilized during vehicle safing operations. SpaceX's team spent the night partying at Mega Bay 2, celebrating the perfectly executed mission on the top floor while lasers displayed Mechazilla on the side of the bay. Elon Musk expressed his thought that they would need at least three catch attempts before they succeeded, and getting it right on the first try makes a great reason to throw a party. On Monday morning, one day after the launch, the road closure was lifted and the booster transport stand resumed its journey to the launch site, leading a convoy of trucks and lifts to the launch pad. Once at the launch site, workers set to disarm the flight termination system on Booster 12, pulling out the explosive charges and detonators from their housing. While the system was being disarmed, the orbital launch mount work platform was brought to the launch site as workers began to assess the state of the complex ahead of preparations for the next launch. In the evening, segments of modular fencing were delivered and offloaded at the launch complex after having been removed for the launch. Over at the build site, a barrel section, likely for Booster 16, was rolled out of Star Factory and stopped in front of Mega Bay 2. A crane was then used to bring a scissor lift into the barrel section. The scissor lift and barrel section were then rolled into another area of Star Factory together. Shortly before midnight, the booster transport stand was placed next to the orbital launch mount to take Booster 12 back to Star Factory. On Tuesday morning, the quick disconnect panel was retracted, severing the connection between the return booster and the ground support infrastructure. The chopstick stabilizer pins were brought to the contact hard points on the side of the booster to hold the stage steady for placement on the transport stand. The Starlink payload dispenser installation jig was taken out of the installation area inside Mega Bay 2, where it was used on Ship 34. Following a few hours of checks, Booster 12 was lifted out of the orbital launch mount and carefully set down on the transport stand ahead of its return trip to the build site for post-flight analysis. Back at the build site, the payload dispenser installation jig was relocated from Mega Bay 2 to the Star Factory. Tower module assembly jig legs were trucked out of Starbase through the build site's front gate, heading off to the parts unknown. The ship quick disconnect arm, which had been in the open position since Flight 5 lifted off on Sunday, was returned to its resting position on the tower. The chopstick stabilizer pins were then disengaged from Booster 12. The arms were then lowered, leaving the booster standing freely and giving us a first look at the areas where the catch arms bumped and scraped against the fuel tank. Large scratches and other markings are visible on the side of the tank where the arms scraped against it during the landing burn. With Booster 12 now secured to the transport stand, the Super Heavy departed the launch complex for the production site. Crews immediately began inspecting the chopsticks. The workers took an elevator up the tower and were standing by to look at the arms before the booster even left the launch complex. SpaceX's workers cheered for the arrival of Booster 12 at the build site, giving it a hero's welcome as it was brought to Mega Bay 1. Back at the launch site, the Saren's crane raised its derrick ahead of reassembly. 
outside Mega Bay 1, Booster 12's grid fins were given their customary pre-entry grid fin tilt, giving the booster the space it needed to clear the doors. The booster was then rolled into the bay, ready for workers to begin their battery of post-flight teardowns and inspections. Booster 16's common dome was moved out of Star Factory and workers began moving it towards Mega Bay 1. A section of Booster 16's liquid oxygen tank followed suit, heading out of Star Factory before being staged outside of Mega Bay 1's main door. The transport stand that Booster 12 rode in on, along with a load spreader, were wheeled out of the bay before heading to Sanchez for storage. The orbital launch mount work platform departed its staging area at the launch site and made its way next to the mount for installation. Returning to the production site, the common dome section of Booster 16 was moved into Mega Bay 1. The booster liquid oxygen tank section then joined the common dome inside about 45 minutes later. SpaceX's LR-11000 crane, which was laid down ahead of Flight 5, began to stir on Wednesday morning, with its main boom slowly raising up from its resting position. Over the next two hours, the main boom was incrementally raised up and the crane was then ready to resume its work at the launch site. Construction at the Western Launch Pad quickly resumed, with the continuous flight augers drilling holes and rebar cages continuing to be installed at the site. A trailer loaded with flexible hoses departed the build site, heading down Highway 4 towards the launch complex. The truck quickly arrived at the launch complex and began backing in towards Pad B. An excavator at the launch complex began its Thursday morning by moving waste collection bins, nicknamed Skips, into position as the stand for the launch mount work platform began rolling off the site. The excavator soon got to work tearing up the concrete with a hydraulic hammer. A bare pressure dome, not yet sleeved with an accompanying barrel section, was wheeled out of the Star Factory into the yard outside. The dome then entered a different section of Star Factory. Dump trucks and belly dump trailers began to arrive at the launch site to haul away earth as it's excavated from the new flame trench at the western pad. Several auger sections for the continuous flight auger were trucked out of the launch site. These pieces have a finite service life and occasionally need to be swapped out. Over at Sanchez, the cable chain for Tower 2's chopstick carriage was being loaded onto a transport and strapped down. Crews then began reinstalling the stabilizer pins on the orbital launch mount, starting with the north side pin, then moving to the south side. One of the smaller cranes at the launch site began installing another protective panel for the cable chain on Tower 2. The initial attempt was aborted, but the second shot went without a hitch. The new Block 2 ship lifter that was delivered to Starbase a couple of weeks ago was brought out of Star Factory and set down on the floor inside Mega Bay 2 for assembly. One of the Saren's crane's boom segments was taken out of the launch complex, departing through the D2 gate, leaving Starbase and heading up Highway 4 towards Brownsville. Making use of the flat space in front of Mega Bay 2's entrance, the Block 2 ship lifting jig was being put together. Over at the launch complex, another one of the protective cable chain panels was attached to the tower. And about an hour later, the chopsticks were raised, opened, and then lowered again. This position was likely being used to allow easy access to the arms for inspections and repairs following Sunday's booster catch. Switching gears and moving over to Florida, early on Saturday morning, SpaceX rolled out the Europa Clipper Falcon Heavy rocket to the launch pad at Historic Launch Complex 39A and prepared for the upcoming launch now that Hurricane Milton has passed. On Saturday morning, Doug returned to Port Canaveral with the fairing halves from the Hera launch. After completing recovery operations, the vessel has stopped over at the Bahamas to wait out Hurricane Milton before returning to port. Just a few hours later, the ship headed back out to sea, likely in support of the new Starlink mission. This comes following the FAA's approval for Falcon 9's return to normal flight operations on Friday. Sunday morning, as Starship was preparing for launch in Texas, just read the instructions return home to Port Canaveral after sheltering from the hurricane in the Bahamas. 
Similarly, SpaceX support ship Shannon returned to Port Canaveral after taking shelter from the storm in Charleston. Support ship Harvey Stone also brought Blue Origin's landing barge Jacklin back to port on Saturday. The long-awaited Europa Clipper mission, sending a probe to explore the plumes of water ice ejected from the ocean buried under the frozen ice of Jupiter's moon Europa, lifted off from historic Launch Complex 39A on Falcon Heavy. All three cores were burned to depletion to extract as much performance from the vehicle as possible. Europa Clipper needed everything Falcon Heavy had to offer as it embarked on its six-year cruise to the Jovian system. Falcon 9 Booster 1080 lifted off with Starlink Group 10-10 on Tuesday, carrying 23 Starlink V2 mini satellites into orbit. Signet Warhorse 1 towed just read the instructions out to sea in the evening ahead of the Starlink Group 8-19 mission, which lifted off on Friday the 18th. Signet Warhorse 3 also returned to Port Canaveral on Thursday, bringing home a short fall of Gravitas with Booster 1080 following the Starlink Group 10-10 launch. With its 11th mission under its belt now, Booster 1080 was lifted off the landing ship in high winds, forcing crews to take extra time lowering the Falcon 9 onto the dockside stand. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't ready, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.